this is the entity that we designed uh, yesterday so which contain multiple properties and this particular property uh, these many properties are ultimately part of the entity set and the SAP is behaving very slow okay so these are the properties and its type as I this would be a uh, of type EDM dot something and uh, date and time type if it is specified it would be suggestible the two set it as nullable because the 0000 date which is actually coming up if the date is not maintained for that particular record would not be a valid date it would be invalid but for that we have to add it uh, already intimate the system that it's uh, the field is nullable that's why I don't consider 0 as a date but it is a null field the default value same way also we define the entity sets uh, runtime artifacts and that particular runtime artifact contains the get entity set methods and that particular method we redefine uh, because it was earlier inherited from its parent class the parent class would be nothing but its DPC class and as we mentioned we won't be doing any sort of change in the original DPC or MPC class we would be doing all sort of changes in its extension class so if you see these are the inherited method now why we are not able to see get entity set over here because the inherited method has already been defined and if you are in a child class if you redefine a method then the redefined method would take a priority let's say if we are in a uh, if you are living in a family and in your family my parents have actually built some property and if I am announcing it then the newer version would be the one which I have actually uh, developed or uh, uh, designed so that would be what we call the redefinition because that's why we call class is nothing but a, a real world scenarios so that's what we did in a So if you see over here we redefine the method and what we did over here is we just read the uh, filter operation by IT filter select option we would be having multiple input parameters which we would be learning uh, as and when we go forward and uh, by repassing the range we would be getting the proper uh, return data which would be for the user's input property. then uh, if you want the all line item record also to be shown and we have to uh, fill the con response context that is also a return variable and that response context we would be filling with number of lines and it would be returning me the total number of lines in the JSON output how we actually registered the service okay. so registering the service we added the service and after adding the service if you see we have uh, defined uh, for this external service name we have defined an internal service name that would that is the same as that of uh, the soft, uh, internal service name and we uh, use the gateway client to taste the service which was actually generated and uh, uh, the gateway client is the one which we would be using for all the kind of unit testing that we would be doing and uh, uh, before we ensure that our output and uh, the processing which we have actually defined, is working smoothly before handing it over to the uh, front end developer <coughs> okay so the output that we will be getting over here would be a particular that uh, the output which we are getting over here is a uh, output for all the PO header data set that we are getting from get entity set now moving forward so uh, as we already discussed the kind of operations that we have performed over here are the first operation that we perform over here was uh, query okay operation that we already discussed create queue means create read update and query if I have a database table okay if let's first discuss the query operation that we already perform so query would be nothing but if I have some filter parameters I'll pass the data then I can give get a data varying from 0 to n so that is something what we got uh, what we have uh, what we will call the query second thing uh, which we will be currently now discussing on would be a read query now uh, this uh, read and query would look uh, the same kind of because uh, query would be returning you the number of records read will also be returning you uh, the record based on the whatever input parameter you pass the only difference would be 
the same as that of the uh, read table like whenever i am using the read table read table the number of record which i'll be getting always would be one right because read table doesn't support multiple operation returning it just uh, return me the first uh, one record same way read would be returning me one record but as it is a odbc for web for web we need to ensure that uh, whatever parameter we are passing for the read query is a primary key for that particular entity primary key for entity why primary key is required because we want to ensure that for the input key parameter we are passing uh, we are uh, in the final entity set we should have only one matching uh, set if i have let's say 10 records and uh, i have defined a primary key as the first column then uh, if i pass the value of any of the parameter in the first column i would be getting an only a unique record right that's why uh, while reading uh, while performing any read operation all we need to pass is a read uh, input which we would be passing would be a, a primary key and here whatever parameter we would be passing would be dollar filter so this would work on the filter operation the query parameter would and the read uh, or you can say get operation would work on a get operation would work on a primary key and here it can return only one uh, one record if uh, we are not able to find any one uh, any single record for it then we would get an exception and that we would be seeing like what exception we can get over here okay okay so let's see that particular thing in picture so over here if we go in particular uh, gateway over here in gateway if you see i have define a entity and the primary key which i have defined over here is nothing but our ebln parameter because ebln is a primary key for purchase order table that we have actually refer so to do a read operation the ultimate format would be after this particular entity set we would have a round bracket and in uh, first parameter we would be passing would be the name of the pro property it should be same as that of the property name we have defined over here upper case and lower case should also match let's say if i have defined a property name with ebe capital then ln is in lower case then the property name which we would be passing over here should match exactly so it's ebe ln equal to over here in single inverted comma i have passed i have to pass the value let's say over here i am getting 4 5 all 0 1 then if i want to read only that particular record then i would be passing this particular record and over here and we would be pressing an enter and we should be able to get a single record but we are getting an error saying that po header set get entity is not defined because if you see over here uh, i'll just quickly go into the class if you remember we uh, whenever generating a particular raw data service we uh, have got multiple class redefined and that particular class is uh, uh like our dpc dpc ext mpc mpc ext in dpc there were five methods for get operation there were for get operation there were entity method defined this is something which is related to a read operation which would be using for the primary key based reading so we would be redefining this method and after redefining this method if you see we have a particular get entity method over here which is available and what all parameters do we have over here so let's say in signature we have something called it key tab we don't have any filter options over here which we were getting in it filter uh, which we are getting in the get entity set it means all the operation that we would be doing in get entity method of any of the entity would be based on a key parameters only so what we will do over here is we we have to read the particular data based on uh, our key parameter so what would be a key parameter over ebln so let's just define a variable where we can read the ebln okay one thing second uh, we would be re reading the uh, key key parameter from it key tab okay so we would be reading the read key parameter okay so this read key parameter would be lv ebln equal to 
uh, we uh, will first uh, check what is the structure of that particular IT key that with which we are actually going to read. So in signature, if we go over here, we have a structure, uh, we have a table type and its uh, line type is that of the value key pair. And uh, it has two parameters, name and value. So in name, we would be getting the name of the property. In value, we would be getting the value which is being passed. So over here, if we go, the name would be EBLN and the value would be 45001. But if you see the, the type defined over here is very generic. It means the name would be string. That is like not our concern. But the thing is value is also defined as a string. So if we directly use this particular value parameter in the select query, we won't be get, getting the correct output because the type won't be matching. And hence, we have defined a local variable and we are not directly using the value parameter over here. So our ultimate purpose, uh, what we would be doing over here is we would be reading this RT, IT key tab. So we would be reading the IT key tab by passing name as equal to uh, the property name over here. And we would be doing a value operation over here okay so this particular value parameter which we would be getting for ebln would be uh, the value which we are actually expecting for the read operation to get performed now if we have a particular data in lvebln then we would be And what is the returning parameter which is actually defined over here is ER entity. So that's what we would be using over here ER where EBLN is equal to LV EBLN. That's straightforward, right? So as we have already uh, the response defined in ER entity of uh, as we learn in last lecture, the above 7.4 and 5, if we are using a SQL syntax, which is of new type, how we come to know that like it is of new type, we are using a host variable, then all the syntax defined over here should be of new type. So into corresponding field of ER entity is also uh, a variable. So it should be uh, preceded with a host type, host escape characters that is at the rate. Okay. Second thing, uh, if we have, if we are, let's say, let's just activate this particular value first of all code first of all. Let's see what we are getting over here. It says incorrect nesting. Why? Because we are using the select single. We are using a select and we are not defining single over here. But as we, I already mentioned, the get entity will always be returning a single value. Okay. So let's just uh, come down over here. If I press and enter, we are getting a record for a particular uh, value I passed over here, 4, 5, all 0, 1. Okay. Now, uh, there are chances that the whatever read operation we are doing over here does not have a value specified. Let's say some user is not passing a valid value over here. So we can say value, read, and read only if you have a proper data available in it. And else don't throw the exception because we are already checking the initiality over here. So we can make it optional. So that is the advantage of using new ABAP syntax query. We do not need to use the read table and all those syntaxes. We can directly use it like this. Second thing which, which I want to highlight over here is, uh, let's say if I talk about the PO header set, uh, get entity set level. In get entity set, let's say what we were doing earlier was, I while hitting an enter, I am getting multiple data. Okay. Uh, I have defined already a filter on BUKRS. So if I use a question mark dollar filter equal to BUKRS equal to, let's say I am just passing any kind of random stuff. And if I'm not getting any data, I'm just getting an empty array or let's say empty JSON array. But uh, I'm not getting any kind of error. Still the status code over here is, here is 200. But whenever we are using a particular get entity, Let's say what I have mentioned over here, a query can return 0 to end record. That is valid. But a read uh, query which we are posing over here should always return one record. There are no options that like it can return a zero record or more than one record. No, it has to, uh, has, have, to have written one record. And if you are not getting any record, then we would be getting an error. 
So let's say I am passing EBL and then I am passing a value of let's say say six eight seven nine nine and whatever I am, a random value I am passing. If I am not getting any record, you will get a error saying resource not found for header segment. So that is the known error, very known error you would be getting. So if you are in uh, future you are coming across any error resource not found for segment, you should be very sure that whatever method which is getting triggered is get entity and for whatever key parameter you are passing we don't have any resource defined so again i want to uh, make you remember something from last lecture saying rest api is a resource based api and not action based so for whatever input you are passing if you are not getting any kind of resource defined then you would be getting this particular exception or error the status code over here would be 404 and that is valid because whatever input you are passing is not genuine and it's not valid okay uh,